Yo soy el niño. For those of you who don't habla espanol, el niño is Spanish for the niño. Ah, uh, well, you can never go wrong starting off with some Chris Farley. And yes, our El Nino weather pattern is about set to return as the Arctic air takes a winter sabbatical. What does that mean for your weather? I'll let you know, coming up next. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Weather Nerds YouTube channel. I'm meteorologist Greg Majeski. Before we get started, we always like to welcome aboard all our new subscribers. And if you're part of the 95% who have not yet subscribed to the channel, please consider it. All you got to do is hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell to be alerted on future content, and give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below as it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. All right, let's talk about what you need to know for this edition. All right, we're gonna talk about the latest on El Nino. We're gonna talk about how strong it is. We'll compare it to previous years, and we'll talk a little bit about what we're expecting with this as we progress through the winter months uh, wrapping up and going into the spring. We'll take a look at the latest climate outlook, including the North Atlantic Oscillation, which is gonna show us why we're gonna see milder weather. And I'll kind of give you an idea when I expect many things to turn colder again uh, later into the winter. We'll take a look at the 850 millibar level. We'll talk about uh, watching the Arctic air retreat out of the country and you'll see how much milder it gets across the nation. And then we'll finally wrap things up by taking a look at the European model. We'll see how we'll, we'll track those storm systems here over the next 10 days. All right, plenty to talk about. Let's go ahead and take a look at El Nino and uh, see how it's doing so far this year. So just as a reminder, we're talking about El Nino. It's the warming of the waters in the Eastern Pacific and has a big influence on the weather pattern across the continental United States. And typically what happens is we have a very active subtropical jet stream and the polar jet stream is not as strong. So as a result, we see a wetter pattern here across the southern tier of the United States and it's warmer up toward the north. What we've been experiencing here recently is that the polar jet stream and the subtropical jet stream have kind of merged together. They've been in phase, allows a lot of cold air to come on down south. South. Now, as we go forward here to wrap up the month of January, that is no longer going to be the case, and we're going to kind of return back to what we were seeing through the month of December. Of course, there's some question marks on how long it'll stick around, but we'll talk about more about that here in a second. I do want to take a look at how this El Nino is as compared to other previous years. And as you take a look at this graph here, you see the ups and downs. The blue is when we're in La Nina. That's when the we have cooler water in the Eastern Pacific and of course El Nino being the red. So let's zoom in here a little bit closer right in here. And as you can see, we had a pretty strong El Nino. We're right down here at the end of the, of the graphic here, right in here. And you can see that uh, it has been a strong one, but not as strong as the one say back in 2015, nor has it been as strong as say the one back in 1983. So a strong one, yes, but uh, it is forecasted to weaken. We're expecting it to start weakening as we head into the springtime and a 73% chance of it going neutral as we go from say April to June, and maybe even going back into La Nina later into the year. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the latest climate outlook as with El Nino's influence, we got some much warmer temperatures moving back in across the US. You know, it's kind of hard to imagine like on a day like January the 17th, it's such frigid temperatures across the big chunk of the country that we're ever gonna see warmer weather, but we are going to see it, you know, for every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction and we're definitely gonna be getting that. We'll start off by taking a look at the six to 10 day outlook here and you pretty much just draw a circle on the entire country. We're looking at above normal temperatures for just about everybody. Yeah, everybody's seeing above normal temperatures. And that trend, my folks, my friends, will continue in today's eight through 14. So no big significant changes there. We'll see colder temperatures returning actually for areas up in Alaska, but you know, for the lower 48, it's gonna be seeing temperatures quite warm. For you snow lovers out there, probably a forecast you definitely don't like. All right, we'll take a look at the, the uh, precipitation outlook here as we go through six to 10 days, again, covering January 22nd to the 26th, and a big chunk of the nation seeing uh, above normal precipitation chances, except for the areas here up in the high plains with below uh, normal precipitation. And it looks like this will uh, things will dry out a little bit as we head out toward the west coast as we look at days eight through 14 here, noticing a little bit of that drier weather here across uh, areas of California coming back into the Intermountain region a little bit, but still staying very wet here across the southern tier, uh, very 
typical of an El Nino season when you see that weather pattern, especially for the southern states from Texas over to Georgia as we go through that forecast period. Now, I want to talk, finally wrap things up by taking a look at the North Atlantic Oscillation. Uh, this, again, is a tool that shows me the position of the jet stream. When we're in a negative phase like we've been in, that's when we have the colder weather, that's when we have the more active storm track, and we're going to start seeing things begin to change a bit as we're going to see things um, start to uh, modify and begin to warm up. So, as you can see here, the trend is to go up, and we're going to go into a, a, a positive phase. So here is the zero line right here. So when we go in positive, that means we're going to see milder weather. And we're also going to see, um, you know, not as active with the major storm systems. They typically be, uh, to, tend to be weaker, uh, kind of offer some forecast challenges to say the least. But we're looking this to continue into the first week in January. Right now, my best estimate, just looking at the pattern we've kind of been in here, uh, it's maybe somewhere between February 7th and the 15th, somewhere in right in there, we may see this begin to go back into a negative phase and we might see some colder temperatures then. Now, I've seen previous winters where we have gone very cold in January and the whole month of February be mild and warm when we stay on the, on the positive side. But we'll see. Right now, I think uh, we might see some changes sometime between the 7th and the 15th, and that's when we may see um, colder shots to come back down into the lower 48. All right, let's go ahead and track that Arctic air retreat, and we'll talk about that warmer weather when we back in. So we're going to begin by looking at the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet, the 850 millibar level, and it kind of shows us the temperature profile at that level, and you can really see where that Arctic air is really entrenched across a big part of Canada and parts of the lower 48. So I'll go ahead and zip myself out of here, and you can see that deep purple. That is the Arctic air sitting right through this region, and uh, that is going to be going to be giving us one more shot coming in for the weekend and then we'll see things greatly change and I'll show you that as we progress through this timeline as we get a brief mild up here as we head into Thursday but uh, we're going to see conditions here across the southeast really start to go downhill in the mid-Atlantic as another cold shot comes on down heading in for this upcoming weekend. So here comes the dive coming down. It does modify a little bit but it's pressing down into the southeast once again and the mid-Atlantic and the northeast as we go into Friday morning. So it'll be a cold and frigid start across just about the eastern half of the United States looking a bit frigid there. They're starting to warm things up out here in the west. Yeah, they're modifying here across California, heading into Idaho and into the desert southwest. Uh, that, that's going to start that to warm up, but that milder air is going to begin to move off toward the east as this air begins to kind of retreat this way as we go into early next week. So let's continue to track this as we go forward in time. You notice the, the purple kind of losing its punch there across the eastern third of the United States, but it starts to move on out, and you're noticing that milder temperature starting to move on in as we've got to get a subtly return flow uh, coming in the back across the, here as high pressure moves off the eastern seaboard and things begin to retreat up, and the whole continental United States really warms up, including parts of Canada. That's going to move well to the north, <clears throat> kind of retreating back into the Arctic Circle uh, as we go into the end of this run here. So by the time we hit to next week, a uh, big part of the country looking very mild indeed, indicative of what we showed you there with that climate out well, uh, going out to next week, and it looks like it's going to stay that way. Got a little minor cool down here coming in across the Great Lakes as we head into the following weekend. But notice the lack of the deep purples. That is way off toward the north as uh, the cold air has got to refuel its supply. It's going to take a little bit too. So by the time we get to the end of this, this run going into the end of next Friday, it uh, looks like very mild conditions here across the eastern third of the United States. A little cool down for the Great Lakes and very mild obviously out here on the west coast as well as that Arctic air has got to go back to the north and recharge, and we'll see if it makes a return visit sometime, probably as we head toward the 7th to the 15th of February. That's the timeline I will continue to track at this time. All right, we talked about the Arctic air getting out, out of here. Let's go ahead and uh, take a deeper look at the European model and see where we're going to see some wet weather. Yeah, weaker storm system, but it's going to be a little bit wet across portions of the country over the next 10 days. So let's go take a look. So we begin by looking at the model data here late in the day on your Wednesday as we're going to be watching the storm system out here in the, the west coast area here for the Intermountain region. You'll notice the snow, some pretty decent heavy snows across areas of Idaho, getting areas of Montana uh, with some pretty good snows here. So this is going to track off toward the east and as it does so, it, once it goes by, it's going to tap some of that cold air up in Canada 
and help drive it back down into the continental United States. So let's go ahead and track this system as we go into your Thursday as we watch that snows kind of spread out into the plains into Thursday morning and eventually getting into Nebraska and areas of South Dakota, maybe little areas of Minnesota. So not overly strong. We're seeing some another bit of little energy down here toward the south that's gonna kind of hook up with it. Earlier models indicated it looked like it may be a bit of a stronger storm system, but it does not appear to be the case for this. Uh, we're gonna get some snows into New England, but uh, definitely not a robust system uh, by all accounts. So watch as we go forward here. Again, due time as we go into Friday morning, you see the snows kind of erupting there across areas of Ohio, Pennsylvania, Indiana, getting into West Virginia, getting close to Washington, D.C., Pennsylvania. Some of the bigger cities will get a little snow on this one. And here is a little chunk of that Arctic air coming in on the back side of the system as we go into Friday morning. So let's track this thing through the weekend as we still continue with the snows throughout the day on Friday across areas of the Mid-Atlantic and parts of the Northeast as this begins to move off and just settles into a very, very cold and frigid morning from Saturday morning. You got a little chunk of that polar vortex sitting right across New England. It is quite cold to say the least, but the air out here in the West definitely modifying nicely as we watch a weaker system providing some rains here across areas of California as we go throughout the day on Saturday, the 20th Saturday morning. All right, let's continue to watch this model as we go ahead and track forward here through time as we watch that cold air begin to slowly retreat. Sunday morning will be the last morning you'll see this a very frigid air here across the New England and the Mid-Atlantic as that milder temperatures will start to kick on in as we showed you there on the previous uh, model there. And as this pulls on through, uh, some very active weather on the West Coast. Check out Sunday night into Monday morning. Some pretty heavy rains here across California, up and down the coastline. San Francisco going down to near Los Angeles, uh, getting some heavy rains. The Sierra Nevada will get some uh, higher elevations, get some pretty robust snows with this. As this area of high pressure, which is responsible for the cold air, is going to allow a nice warm up. You're going to get a clockwise flow around the area of high pressure, and we're going to tap some moisture as well and uh, bring in a little bit of shower activity across areas of Texas and areas of Oklahoma uh, as we head into your Monday morning. So Monday morning, looking a little wet there across Texas for Dallas, San Antonio, looking a little wet on Monday as the high pressure continues to retreat. And that rain is going to move all the way north. Areas that would typically see snows, those are getting rains here. Uh, going into Tuesday morning uh, across uh, into Illinois, into Michigan, you'd think we normally would be seeing snow. They're going to see rain out of this one because temperatures are just going to warm up so much. Still cold enough to a little bit of snow there across areas of Michigan uh, and into southern Canada, into the areas of Toronto. Uh, maybe a little snow up that way heading throughout the day on, on your Tuesday. Maybe upstate New York also, thanks to this area of high pressure up here, providing just enough cold air uh, for areas up there. But uh, some wet and rainy conditions across areas of Texas and just some light rains. No major storm systems, just to see a little bit of moisture, some weak little impulses kicking up with the flow, and uh, some scattered showers. Some of this could be thunderstorms as well uh, through this area, uh, and out to the Gulf of Mexico and into Texas, but nothing severe. I'm not expecting like that, but a rumble thunder not out of the question. Uh, with this as we're seeing a, kind of an upper level system uh, kind of swinging through here with the rains as we go into a Wednesday of next week. And again, nothing severe, maybe a rumble thunder, some rains with this uh, as this goes into uh, throughout the day, heading into Wednesday and into Thursday. And that rain begins to progress off toward the east. And look, it's raining from the Canadian border all the way down to the Gulf Coast, indicative of just how warm and mild the temperatures are gonna be uh, once that cold air retreats on out. Again, for every action, equal but opposite reaction, and we're definitely going to see that uh, going into next week with that wet weather settling on in. And that wet weather will pull into New England as we go into your Thursday night and into Friday morning, and still looking at the wet weather stretching from areas of New England and all the way down toward Louisiana and up along the down the eastern seaboard there. You're seeing that uh, wet weather right through there. And it's, uh, but not a washout, just some scattered shower rain threats. And that, that's going to continue uh, right into, as we wrap this model up on Friday. Still seeing the rains here along the Gulf Coast. Wet conditions and kind of cloudy conditions across the southeast will continue as we go into the following weekend. The last weekend of January as we go from the 26th and into the 27th. So big changes coming. We're going to see milder weather come back at us. We're going to see uh, a rainy pattern kind of settle on in. And for you snow lovers, looks like really the last chance for seeing some decent snows will be with this next storm system with the Arctic air coming on down and a little bit of path snows going into areas of the Midwest and into New England, which will probably quickly melt thanks to the big warm up that'll be coming our way. Let's go ahead and wrap things up for this edition.
Now, obviously, since we've been transitioned into this colder weather pattern, we've had opportunities to get snow across a lot of the country, especially areas here in the south, thanks to that snowstorm that went through a lot of areas ending into yesterday and the day before prior. And uh, But um, this map is going to change significantly after we get by this upcoming weekend. After this weekend, a lot of that snow across a lot of the country is going to melt away. So for you snow lovers out there, those who like, like winter conditions, uh, uh, it's not going to be good for you for right now. But I do promise you we're not through with winter just yet. And there may be other opportunities to get some uh, snow and winter weather back in here a little bit later into February. Again, I'm thinking after the 7th of February. But until then, expect milder weather to return by next Monday. And it's going to be sticking around for at least a couple of weeks before we see things potentially change as we head deeper into the month of February. All right, that's a look at your latest edition for now. Again, thank you as always for being a viewer. I really do appreciate it. And if you're watching for the first time and you have not subscribed, please consider just hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell to be alerted on future content, and you know what else you got to do here. Anyway, you guys take it easy. We'll look forward to serving you guys next on the upcoming edition. Until then, be good out there, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.